Morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Everyone's coming in from our waiting rooms. How exciting is this? I can see big waves coming in from classes and schools. Morning, everybody. Very exciting. Welcome, welcome. Everyone's coming. So it's great. We are streaming live from Talbot Heath School, Bournemouth, uh, to schools around the UK and beyond. Um, and we always think big here. Uh, and when I first met Stuart, um, who's such a dynamic person, I said, well, we're in lockdown, but why can't we do a live streamed national global lesson to launch the Hanson boxes. And I'm so thrilled that Talbot Heath School has been able to support. And a huge thank you to Mrs. Brown, who has devised the lesson plans that have gone out with these Hanson boxes around the world to so many schools. And Stuart is one of the leading conservationists. He's a doer, he's a can-do man, positive mentality. And I love the fact that his mission is to change the world for the better um, by raising awareness, by educating people, by getting people to change how they view conservation and how important it is, understanding just how important it is. So you being here, young people, teachers, educators, supporting this initiative, you are making a difference. You are changing the planet for the better. So we have Stuart, who is a leading global conservationist. He's a writer, he's a presenter. He's going to start us off. And then we have um, Jo Brown, Mrs. Brown, who has devised all the lesson plans and she will be leading our live lesson this morning. So I'm going to ask them, are they there? Are you there, Stuart? Are you there, Mrs. Brown? Yep, hello. Great. Hello. Right, handing over to you. Wonderful. Well, welcome everybody, welcome schools across the UK and beyond to our session about making the insect hotels. My name is Stuart McPherson. And I'm Jo Brown. It's, it's a pleasure to welcome you here today. And we hope this short session will give you some ideas and some inspiration about how to build your very own insect hotel. The hotels were very, very generously provided by the Don Hansen Charitable Foundation. Over the last six weeks, we've been shipping out these boxes, and you should have hopefully received one uh, at your school in the last few weeks. They're called the 2020 um, Hansen Boxes. And here's a shot of our warehouse. Over the last six weeks, we've sent 220 tons of those 20,000 Hansen Boxes. Uh, they're very, very generously created and, and, and donated to schools, completely free by the Don Hansen Charitable Foundation. So there's a few photos of them going out. The, each Hansen box contains a range of specially designed resources with five books. This is the one we're going to be talking about with the Insect Hotels today. It's made in partnership with the Jane Goodall Institute's Roots and Shoots groups. It's called Local Safari, Wildlife Adventures at Home. There's also a book about the marine life of the UK and overseas territories called Britain's Distant Seas. A book about the world's most spectacular geography here um, to hopefully brighten up geography classes. A book also about weird and wonderful creatures and animals that you might never have heard of to make biology classes even more exciting. And a DVD and a little history book that showcases some amazing facts about UK history and history around the world as well. So those books in addition to some lesson plans. So we put lesson plans in that are linked to the national curriculum for Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 that will help teachers have their lessons um, pre-planned to use the resources from the box. And there's one that you can use after this lesson that links through to the importance of these. That's wonderful. So today, we're all about the insect hotels. This is an example here, and this is what your school can build to showcase your students the importance of insects and the importance of the birds. So inside your Hanson box, you should have five pieces of pre-cut sustainably sourced timber. You should also have a flyer with a step-by-step -step guide, which we're going to explain today, showing how to build your insect hotel. And of course, your local safari book, 
which also has a lot of information about insect hotels and how to build. So with those three different elements, you can create your very own insect hotel. And there's also a packet of wildflower seeds, so you can grow your own pollinator garden and look after the insects that you encourage and nurture and, and take care of. So just very briefly, here's the flyer with the step-by-step -step guide. And um, it relates directly to this local safari book. Inside the book, there's lots of activities and lots of fun things to do with your insect hotel. So why build this? Why do insects matter? Very, very quickly, here's a quick overview of why we all need to care about insects, some species, which many species of which are in decline across the UK. Insects are very, very important. They're all around us. If you go outside into the woodlands or to the forests or anywhere, including even cities, you're almost guaranteed to see insects, whether they're above you, flying in the air, below you, down in the ground, or all amongst you, amongst vegetation and plants, trees and, and flowers. Insects, every single species of insect has its own different story to tell. And if you look closely, you'll see the amazing beauty and detail and just intricacy of each different type of insect. You often have to use a magnifying glass or a microscope to get really close up to look at those insects. And in fact, there's, there's some activities in the local safari book about exploring the micro, micro world at your fingertips with the microscope. They're incredibly beautiful. Just look at the wings of a butterfly under a microscope. You'll see thousands upon thousands upon thousands of colorful scales. Or next time you see a little bee, just a little bee, which you see hundreds every day. Oh, sorry. Um, next time you see a little bee, just look at the amazing beauty of its wings or the hairs on its bodies, which it uses to collect pollen grains and particles. If you look very, very closely at the bee, you have to count its eyes. The answer is in this local safari book. Try and see how many eyes a bee has. It's not just the two big ones on the side of its head, but many, many others. So have a little look at the amazing beauty. Well, insects do a lot for us. There's many, many, many ways in which they, they contribute to the world in which we live. Just four of them very quickly, some of the most important, are by acting as pollinators. As I'm sure your teachers have told you, many, many flower species, most flower species, require insect pollinators in order to produce seeds. And without those pollinators, the flowers couldn't produce seeds and the plants simply couldn't reproduce. It's also very important for the food that we eat. Most of the crops, such as apples, and many, many types of fruit, depend on insect pollinators. Without those insect pollinators, we wouldn't have fruit such as apples to eat. Of course, also they, they, they're essential for wildflowers as well. Next time you go out to the countryside and see beautiful garden or beautiful uh, meadows of wildflowers, bear in mind that every single one of them exists because of the insect pollinators that pollinate their flowers and help them reproduce. They're also nature's recyclers. Arthropods, invertebrates, and insects all break down the waste that plants, trees, bushes, other vegetation produces. Little creatures like these wood lice here break down the rotting logs and leaves. And without that, the nutrient cycle wouldn't function. And so we wouldn't have the diversity of life that we have on our planet. Many of them, such as ladybirds, also control pests. These guys eat little aphids that otherwise could, could inundate our crops. So they perform a very, very important role. And insects themselves form parts of the food chain. And they support many, many, many other types of, of animals, from birds to mammals, all the way across the world. So it really is no exaggeration to say these are very important animals. 85% of all animal species on Earth are invertebrates, including insects. And so they, they make up the majority. There's over 1,250,000 1, 1, species of known invertebrates and thousands of new species being discovered every single year. So when you guys grow up watching this, you could absolutely become scientists and go and discover and name new species of insects. There's thousands and thousands being found every single year. So without insects, the world could not function wouldn't have the diversity of animals and plants that you see here in the world today. So next time you see insects, 
just remember how beautiful they are and how important they are to the world in which they live and in which you live. So that brings us to our insect hotels and what you can do in your school and you can create your own one. They're really, really fun. You can put in lots of different bits and pieces and attract all sorts of different creatures that Joe's going to explain about in a second. Um, they're really good fun. You can paint them, you can put bits in them, you can watch them over a year and record which animals and which creatures come and explore them and live inside them. You can find a place in your school's ground to locate your insect hotel and you can watch it over the rest of the year. And now is a really good time to build them. Autumn slash winter is a brilliant time to set up your insect hotel. So without further ado, we're gonna take you through the step-by-step -step process that's already shown on your, your flyer, but we're going to show you that to help give you some ideas and hopefully some, some examples that you, know, you can use to, to create your insect hotels at your school. Lastly, I just really quickly want to mention, don't forget to use your local safari book. It's crammed full of activities that relate to your insect hotel, not just in terms of building it, but actually, um, once you attract insects to your, to your school, uh, you can identify them. The, the, the local safari book has all sorts of identification activities, spotting the difference between different groups of insects, um, doing a moth safari and a butterfly safari, and showcasing how insects contribute to, to what the world we live in, and how you can explore them and see them with a microscope and a magnifying glass. But don't forget to relate what you learned today to that book. We really hope you enjoy it. So let's go and see how we make it. So I think we've got lots and lots of schools on Zoom. Hello, everybody. How are you all? We hope you're going to make some lovely insect hotels. Well, there's loads of schools, all from all different parts of the UK. Hello, everybody. Don't forget to send Stuart your questions through the chat link on Zoom, and we'll try and do a question and answer at the end. Hi. Hello, hello, everyone. Wow. There's schools from all over the UK. It's lovely to see you all. Okay, so we've got three basic steps. The first step is when you open your Hansen box, you will find inside of it a bag containing five pieces of pre-cut sustainably sourced timber. A big bit and then two pairs of smaller bits, which are these two here. They're very, very simple. You can get your teachers to help you construct them. This bit is the back of the insect hotel. This bit here, the back. And then you just need the two sides, which go obviously on the side bits here, and then the top and the bottom. Now you can just glue them together, but the best, that to make a really strong insect hotel, your teacher can just drill little holes on the top, the sides, and the tops and the bottoms, and either screw in screws or, or bang in nails, and that'll make it really strong and really, really firm. Um, also in your bag, there's five packets of seeds. One packet is the wildflower seed kit. The others are four packets of beans that are a different activity in the Hanson box. So find your wildflower seeds and we'll talk about them later. So make your box. Remember it has an open front face. So it's a five-sided box, just like that. Very, very simple, very, very easy. And if you screw it together or bang it together with nails, it'll be very strong and last you hopefully a few years. And then you've got to decide what to put inside it. So Stuart told us about the importance of attracting insects into your playground or your garden. Um, or anywhere really, they are so important to the world. And what we need to do is decide what we've got to put in our insect house to attract those different kinds of insects. So if you're thinking about wanting to attract bees, and we think of bees as living in a beehive and in colonies, but actually we have over 240 species of bees in the UK. And a lot of them we call solitary bees. They like to live by themselves. So if in your box you choose to put bamboo, and we actually cut this down ourselves, and you see there's a little hole that's like a tube, the bees like to go inside the bamboo, lay their eggs, it becomes larvae, and then the bee 
develops inside and then comes out and pollinates all of those important plants. The other thing you can do is drill holes into a piece of wood. And the same thing, the bees will go in there and they actually line those holes, those tunnels with pollen to make it all lovely for those eggs. And then they will um, come out when they're ready and do that really important job in our um, environment. If you want your ladybirds, so those pest control animals, they love pine cones. And the reason they like pine cones is there's lots of little gaps that they can go inside and hibernate in. So lots of pine cones for those ladybirds are really, really important. And you can go out and collect those from woodland or gardens or anywhere. So get some lovely pine cones for those ladybirds. Dried leaves you can use, and these are important because they replicate the forest floor. So all of those insects have got lots of spaces between those leaves to hibernate and stay warm, and it acts as a bit of an insulator. So they'll burrow away and find a really warm space in your insect house and, and burrow around in those leaves. And remember also Stuart saying how some of those insects, your wood louse and your centipedes, will break down those leaves. And that's a really important process. We've also got dead wood and bark. And this is for your wood louse and your beetles and your centipedes and they will burrow into this and make little holes and little homes for themselves in your insect house like that. We've got straw. I'm sure lots of you have straw for your um, pets at home. Another very warm insulating uh, material that you can fill all of those gaps in your insect house to encourage as many different varieties as possible to come into your playground for you to have a look at. And if you wanted to attract frogs and newts, newts are actually an endangered species, you could put rocks and pebbles at the bottom of your insect house. You'd have to make sure the house was very low and you will get frogs and newts that will go into that damp space and make their home. So you've got a variety of things Nothing you need to go and buy from a shop. You can find all of these on a walk that maybe you could do um, at home and bring these materials in and then make compartments in your insect house and fill them with all of these different things to attract such a wide variety of insects that you can then study. And remember, if you plant um, the wild seeds, that would be another way having those flowers that are bright, and they smell lovely and that will attract your bees to come in and do that really important pollinating activity that they do, which links to one of the lesson plans in your box. So we've got everything to fill it, but we want our boxes to look really, really special. So I've got some girls helping me over here. And we've chosen to decorate our boxes by using Sharpie pens. You can also use paint, just make sure that it's not water-based and it's something that's going to be non-toxic. And you can decorate around the outside. These are looking amazing, girls, well done. We did some earlier in the week and the girls chose different ways to decorate depending on what they wanted to attract into their boxes. And then they filled them up and made those compartments and we'll be placing them around our school to see what we can attract over the coming months. So I'm going to send you back over to Stuart for some more examples. Well, so um, you guys can choose, as, as Joe is very kind of saying, you can choose and make your own individual, completely unique insect hotel. So I uh, hope that gives you some ideas. We're very, very fortunate that a few schools have already sent in photos with their created insect hotels, which is amazing because the boxes have only been arriving in the last few weeks. I'm just gonna show you a couple of them and hopefully these might give you a few ideas of what you can do and how you can use all that wonderful information that Joe very kindly just relayed to trust me. This insect hotel was sent in by Audley Junior School. A really big congratulations to you guys. You guys have made an amazing insect hotel. Look, they put bamboo all on the top there for bees and they've covered it in moss. 
And this brings up a very good question about where you should put your insect hotel. It's best to put it not somewhere too sunny or not where it would get too hot, often underneath vegetation or down on the ground in the shade of trees, uh, but with a bit of light as well so insects can find it. So really, really, really big congratulations to you guys at Audley Junior's, Junior School. That is a fantastic insect hotel. You guys have done such a great job building that. The next one was sent in by Chapel Allerton Primary School. And look, they've decorated this one with little bits of, of wood to make it look like locks. They put lots and lots of leaf litter and big bits of bamboo. As, um, as Joe was saying, insects love little crevices and little holes to hide away in. So the more three-dimensional you make the inside of your insect hotel, the more places each, each insect will have to hide away and the more animals that it can actually look after and take care of and nurture. So you guys here at, here at Allerton Primary School, Chapel Allerton Primary School, have done a great job. I love the pine cones you put on the top. That's an added little bonus. So remember, when, when other schools, when you create your insect hotels, you can, you can put things on the top, on the sides, or make a roof, or use any creativity that you'd like. Um, you, could, you could add bits to the side if you want to, and make it really, really exciting. Just like um, Chapel Allerton Primary School have done here. So a massive congratulations to all of the very clever pupils there. Really, really well done. Last but not least, don't forget to use the packet of wildflower seeds that you've got in your, um, in your box. You can plant these and make your own wildflower garden to look after the bugs that you attract. My very last point is the Don Hanson Charitable Foundation is running a really exciting competition for the winning 10 photos of the insect hotels. All of the information is actually on your flyer. So you can send in photos and win prizes about the exciting hotels that you guys create. And last but not least, don't forget to request next year's Hanson Box. It's completely free of charge, but because of demand, we're sending it only to schools that request it. So don't forget to, to request next year's. It's full of lots and lots and lots of new, completely new, exciting designs, um, uh, activities and resources and books and DVDs. So good luck creating your insect hotels. Really, really well done on the scores that have already submitted their photos. And we hope you guys get out there and can create. So Joe and I are ready for any questions. If you guys have got any questions at all out there about how to make your insect hotels. Okay, so Stuart, we've had one that said, where should you put your insect house? Where should you locate it outside? That's a very good question. So I'm not sure if you guys heard that. The question was where to put the insect hotel. Well, you have to think about the world of an insect. Insects really like um, open areas. They like the sunlight, they like colorful, lots of insects are attracted to colorful objects such as flowers. So it's best to put it in an area that's visible and exposed to a bit of sun, but not too sunny. If you put it right out in the open, it can overheat and actually cook. So it's best to put it Basically, I would, I would recommend putting it at the side of vegetation, amongst a few leaves where it's visible, but not exposed to direct sunlight. And that actually reminds me of an important point. You can put chicken wire, so grill like open wire at the front, but not solid metal, because that will heat up in summer and, and get too hot for the bugs. So find a place that's sunny, but not too sunny. Exposed to bright lights, but yeah, not direct sunlight. Any other questions at all? I think we've got someone that says. So yes. Uh, What's the biggest insect? The biggest insect of all, the very biggest insect that I know is a type of stick insect. There's a group of Parnassia, which they could be about 40 centimeters long. They're very, 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 very thin, but you, you won't get them in your insect hotel. They're from the tropics. Um, but that's a very good question. But the, the biggest insects you might get in the UK are stag beetles. It's possible they might come and visit, which could be about this big. And they have big horns on the, on the front of their head. So if you're lucky, you might see some of those. That's a really good question. Well done. Oh, yeah. My favorite insect, I love leaf insects. They look exactly like leaves. They're very, very, very beautiful. And that's one thing you guys can look out for. See if you can find any camouflaged insects. A lot of beetles here in the UK have different forms of camouflage, and a lot of moths 
have different forms of camouflage. So I love it, leaf insects, but you won't find them here in the UK, but you will find similar insects with, with different forms of camouflage. So that's another really good question. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I've got to be honest, the, the question was if, if, if it's cruelty, bugs and celebrity uh, get me out of it. I, I haven't even watched that program, I, 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 I don't know that much about it. Yeah, it's best to look after bugs. We'll make a little, we'll make a nice little hotel. But that's a really good question, and it's, it's important to look after insects. That's a very, very good question. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, lots of, the question was what type of insect looks after the environment? Lots and lots and lots and lots of insects help the environment in different ways. Like the pollinators we were seeing earlier, uh, they're very, very important. Wood lice, which you will definitely get in your insect hotel, that break down the leaf litter. And uh, ladybirds that eat aphids that will otherwise become too, too, too numerous. So lots of insects look after the environment in different ways. Um, so that's another very good question. Thank you. Cool. Hi, Good morning, everyone. I'm Mrs. Pugh, the junior school head teacher. Um, and I just wanted to ask if there's any other questions that have come through on the chat um, that perhaps we could ask before uh, we let you get loose on your insect hotels. So are there any other questions that have come through on the chat? Let's see. Any other questions at all? Oh. Um, um, you can see one there about what type of paint to use. Ah, As Joe, yeah. Very good question. <laughs> so it's best to use waterproof paint that's non-toxic. Because remember, your insect hotel hopefully will be full of lots and lots and lots of um, of insects. So it's best to use a waterproof paint that's non-toxic. But you, you can use paints. You can use pens. You could even use crayons if you want to. Wax crayons would probably work very well because obviously they're waterproof. So yeah, the more imaginative the better. But you could even stick on leaves or pin on leaves or, or sticks and bits and pieces. So you don't just have to colour it. You could put, like some of the examples that we saw earlier, you could put little twigs on and sticks and leaves and all sorts of bits. So um, that's a really good question as well. Thank you. Actually, can I ask a question? I was going to ask, is there a particular colour that you think insects would be attracted to? That's a really, really good question. So if, if just in case everyone, make sure everyone heard it, if different colors attract different insects, that's absolutely true. Ground-dwelling insects, such as beetles, generally like darker colors, browns and reds. Whereas flying insects, such as butterflies, that are attracted to colorful flowers to collect nectar, will be definitely attracted to more colorful uh, colors. So if you want to attract beetles, millipedes and ground dwelling insects use darker colors browns blacks darkish reds that's better for them but if you want to attract colorful butterflies or ladybirds and things like that yeah put on reds and yellows and blues and greens just like flowers so you, you, can, you can think of it in, in that way because remember every type of insect has a different role some of them are leaf litter eaters that break up leaf litter and live under logs. Others are pollinators that are attracted to colorful flowers. So the colors are very, very, very important. That's a really great question. Thank cool. you. Uh, we've got one more we, in. Um, how long will the bug hotels last? Oh, that's a good question. So just to make sure everyone heard it, how long will the insect hotels last? Now, honestly, that's kind of about as, as long as a piece of string. If you look after it, it can live, for, it can last for many, many, many years. You might have to refresh what's inside of it every year, or, or to, to do that to make it exciting, you can put different things in each different year. But it's good quality pine, it should last you four or five years. Eventually, obviously, the wood will probably break down and rot, then you can make a new one. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would estimate a good four or five years' use. But next year, think about putting different things inside. If you put lots of pine cones for the ladybirds that um, Joe was talking about earlier, maybe the next year you might consider putting in bark for millipedes and for wood lice and other bugs. So it'll last you many years for sure. If you put it somewhere very wet, it'll probably break down a bit quicker. If you put it under, under a bit of vegetation and leaf, under some vegetation and leaves, it'll probably last a bit longer. But 
don't forget to put new things in it each year and attract a fresh range of bugs. So really, really good luck. Stuart, we've had one last oh, question. Yes, um, what would happen if all the pollinators died? Okay, so the question was, what would happen if all the pollinators um, died? This is a very, very good question, and a very serious one. David Attenborough actually answers this question in um, Life in, in, the, in the Undergrowth. And actually, if you enjoy making your insect hotel, you guys should watch that in your classes. It's a wonderful series. Attenborough describes the answer as follows. If all of the mammals of the world died, all of the big animals, the birds died, the reptiles, not that much would change. A few species would, would be displaced, but not that much would change. But if the insects died out, the invertebrates, the entire global ecosystem as we know it, at least on land, would collapse. And that's not an exaggeration. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of animals and plants, particularly plants, would, would, would simply not exist anymore. You wouldn't have reproduction in hundreds and hundreds of thousands of species of flowering plants. They would just cease to exist. So bugs are incredibly important, in many ways more important than mammals, birds, and reptiles, because they are the foundation of the global terrestrial ecosystem. And without them, the natural world as we know it honestly would look nothing like what we see it today. So they are very, very, very important indeed. And by looking after your own little range of bugs in your, um, in, in your, in your school grounds, you can do your part to help take care of them. And in, on a last note, this really matters. A lot of insects, particularly butterflies here in the UK, are declining. They're getting rarer and rarer and rarer. And they're so beautiful, we don't want them to die out. So in a very real way, by looking after your insect hotel, you can look after not just bugs, but also other animals that feed on bugs as well. So it feeds into the whole bigger ecosystem and the nutrient cycle. So I um, really, really, really hope you've enjoyed our session here, being live from Talbot Heath School today. And um, just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Well, I, yeah. I would just like to say a, a huge thank you uh, to Stuart, who I must say has worked incredibly hard um, has packed all those boxes himself. Or with a team. Well, with a team, <laughs> but without you, it wouldn't have happened. And I'm so pleased that we were able to welcome so many people from all over the country this morning uh, to share in this really exciting project. And I would just like to say, first of all, a big thank you to Stuart and also to Mrs. Brown, who's helped with the lesson plans, and also all the girls and all those children out there and all those staff watching, because as Stuart said, insects are so important. So perhaps we could have a really big round of applause as a thank you. And last but not least, a very big thank you to the Don Hansen Charitable Foundation for making these 20,000 boxes possible. Um, they, they, donated these to your school and 20,000 schools across the UK and the overseas territories. So without them, none of this would be possible. So an enormous thank you to the Don Hanson Charitable Foundation. Uh, so from Talbot Heath, goodbye to everybody and have great fun bug hunting. Bye-bye. Good luck. Bye-bye.